Are you ready? They are still coming. Day 43. First Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 16. Quickly, we've got a lot of work to do. The Bible says, rejoice always. In other words, never get depressed. When you get depressed, you delay your own breakthroughs. Depression delays breakthroughs. Did you get that, Clarence? Then he says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's where we are today. Say, I will pray without ceasing. I will not stop praying. Father God, grant me the grace to keep on praying. I will not stop praying. According to this scripture, I must pray without ceasing. Holy Spirit, grant me the grace to pray without ceasing in the name of Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit, to keep praying without ceasing. Hallelujah. Why did he say pray without ceasing? He said pray without ceasing. Watch this. Because there are situations and circumstances in your life that will make you want to stop praying. The role of the devil is to make you think that your prayer is not working. So he creates a scenario where it looks like prayer is not working. But I have news for you. Even though you are not seeing results yet, it doesn't mean that God is not up to something. Daniel prayed and the angel showed up and he said from the first day until now that you were praying. In other words, heaven knows if you have not stopped praying. Angels come in response, watch this, to constant prayer. Say constant prayer. Say constant prayer. The biggest challenge of many believers is lack of constant prayer. So we allow situations and circumstances to make us decide whether to keep praying or not to keep praying. Naturally, people want to spray and see results. Hello? So, in fact, whatever we do, we want to see results. It's like the frustration of supporting a team that is playing but not scoring. Hello? But if they keep on playing, they are bound to score. They are bound to score. They are bound to score. When they are in their own 18 area, they are not yet scoring. When they're in the midfield, on the, in the center circle, soccer, they are not yet, yet scoring. Hello? But it would be foolish to give up because the ball is in the center circle. At some point, it will move into the enemy's camp, into that enemy's territory. Listen, don't stop praying. You are about to score. Hey, I wish you'd hear this. You are about to score. You are in the area. You are about to score. Don't stop praying and don't stop playing. Don't stop. The devil will start preaching. Whenever you are praying, the devil is preaching in your ear. And then he begins to show you the testimonies of others and say, oh, now, these things are for others. They are not for you. But the devil is a... Why are you listening to a liar? Don't stop praying. Keep on Why should I keep on praying? Because when I'm praying, I'm breaking resistance. In prayer, persistence breaks resistance. Clarence. In prayer, persistence breaks resistance. You've got to be persistent. You've got to be persistent. In other words, it looks like nothing is happening, but I'll keep on praying. It looks like things are getting worse instead of better, but I'll keep on praying because I know that something is happening. Oh, la sa toba haya. I said something is happening. I said something is happening. Look, 18.1. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Don't faint. There are things to make you faint, but don't faint. The harder you pray, the more the spirit husband comes, but don't stop praying. The more you pray, the more you have satanic retaliation in dreams, but don't stop praying. The devil is depending on your stopping to pray, so don't stop praying. 
He is counting on it. He is counting on it. Don't stop praying. Hallelujah. Listen. When you were not praying before, actually things were better than what you are seeing now. Let me explain that. Because the moment you started to pray, there was an alarm in the realm of the spirit. So the resistance started. So that's why when you start praying, resistance starts. I'm explaining to you because you are not understanding some things. But the key is not to say, you know what, it's not going to work. No, the key is to say, it means I must have touched something. For the devil to be alerted and to keep putting pressure, I must have touched some things. You have touched some things in these 43 days. But now it's time to press in. Say press in. Say press on. Say ensure. Say fight. Say keep on fighting. Say keep pushing. Keep on pressing. Say I will fight the good fight of faith. Why faith? Because you are not seeing the results instantly. You will see the results if you keep on praying. If you keep on praying. In the morning, pray. In the afternoon, pray. In the evening, pray. Midnight, pray. 3 a.m., pray. 5 a.m., pray. 7 in, in church, pray. Pray, 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 pray. The Jews pray three times a day. The Muslims pray five times a day. Why are Christians praying zero times a day? Pray. 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 If you go to Dubai, you want to do a transaction with them between 12 and 2. They're not interested. If you bring them a million dollars, they'll turn it away. They'll say, I think my God does not want me to have it because it's prayer time. They value prayer time. Look at Dubai. Dubai is proof that even Muslims' prayers work. What about your God who created the heavens and the earth? Why are you not praying considering his power? Say, I will pray. Come on, say, I will pray. Say, I will not faint. I refuse to allow situations and circumstances to make me faint. I will not faint. Oh, somebody say, I will not faint. Say, I refuse to faint. Say, I will not faint. I will keep on praying. I will keep pushing prayer. Hallelujah. Why pray? Because we are commanded to pray. Why pray? Because God only answers prayer. God doesn't answer complaints. He answers prayer. God does not respond to feelings. He responds to prayer. God doesn't respond to depression. He responds to prayer. So pray. Don't be depressed. Pray. Don't complain. Pray. Don't analyze. Pray. Don't scandalize. Pray. Don't criticize. Pray. 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 Keep praying. Keep praying. Man of God, teach me to pray. How do I learn to pray? By praying. You don't learn to pray by reading prayer books. You learn to pray by praying. The more you pray, the better you get in prayer. The more you pray, the more you build spiritual capacity. More prayer, less problems in the home. Problems in the home are a product of prayerlessness. Because when you don't pray, the devil lives there. You must also write him on your list. He's also living there. Prayer is how God comes to town. Prayer is how the devil gets out of your house. Resist the devil, you flee. So if you're not praying, you're not resisting him. And he's, not, he's going to camp there. I refuse for the devil to camp in my business. I refuse for the devil to sit on my documents. I am going to pray. Listen, you've got to catch this thing on prayer like you've caught a new revelation. Don't be familiar with prayer. People who are familiar with prayer, they pray while they're sleeping. Are you now that familiar with God that you talk to him while you're, while you're lying down? Respect him, hallelujah. Show a posture that you worship this God, hallelujah. Show him that you are serious. Somebody say, pray. Open your mouth and say, pray. Say, I will pray. Say, I will not stop praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For my case study for prayer today, let's go to 1 Kings 18 from verse 42. Shout pray again. 
Say pray again. Talk, talk to me. Say pray again. You pray a little bit. Nothing is happening. Pray again. Pray again. If you are hungry, you eat. You are not satisfied. What do you do? So why, why you are not satisfied? Why are you not praying again? It's like what you guys show me. Hello? Hands eat for the journey is far. Pray for the journey is far. Pray for the destiny is big. Say, I have a big destiny, so I will pray. Give me from verse 41. Look at this. He says, So Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, you are a king. Eat, drink. For there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Prophecy. Say prophecy. Okay? He, he said, No, it's fine. Eat. Next verse. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. While Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, while others are eating, you are fasting and praying. Look at what happened. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. That's a posture of prayer. Next verse. And, and say to his servant, go up now. Look towards the sea. Go and look for what I prophesied about. While you are looking for the manifestation of the prophecy, I am in prayer. So it is the prayer that is causing him to expect the rain. He says, you go and look. I am going to pray. So he went up and looked and he said, there is nothing. You have prayed, but there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. In other words, he would say, go. He says, okay, I'm going. There's nothing. Master, there's nothing. Go again. He goes, there's nothing. He comes and says, there's what? There's nothing. Question. While the servant was going and coming back, what was the master doing? Masters pray. Masters, they do what? They pray. Don't just be the servant who looks or the king who goes up to eat. You be the person who is making things happen. Somebody shout prayer! How many times was he told, told to, to go up? How many times? You have not prayed until you've prayed a seven-dimensional governmental prayer. What is a governmental prayer? When you begin to go into the realm of the spirit and begin to negotiate with the principalities and powers and begin to negotiate with the heavens and say, heavens, you promised me rain. I even heard yes, the sound of the abundance of rain. Where is it? Heaven, you promised me a transaction. I even heard it. I saw it. Now I need to handle it. But I have not seen it. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to pray again shout pray again talk to me say pray again say lord grant me the grace to pray again next verse then it came to pass the seventh time that it says there is a cloud <laughs> after praying seven times there was a cloud how big was the cloud a size of a man's hand Sometimes you pray a lot and you see a small breakthrough. It's enough for you to say, this doesn't work. You are too impatient in your prayer. But the Lord said, pray again. Oh, there's a cloud. A cloud means there's, there's going to be rain. You have seen a small promise. It should be enough to keep you praying. 43 days, no results. You say, Lord, I want to see the cloud. Between today and tomorrow, I want to see the cloud. If I see the cloud, the rain is guaranteed. Lord, show me a cloud. I need a sign, oh Lord. Show me a cloud. He said, there is a cloud. As small as a man's hand rising out of the sea and he said go up say to Ahab prepare
prepared the chariot. Go before the rain stops, stops you. In other words, he now spoke the prophecy in agreement. I have prayed seven times. It has not yet started raining. I have seen the cloud. It's enough for me to say, Ahab, you better get going. The rain is going to stop you. Not the rain from a cloud the size of a man's hand. No, that's just the beginning. He said, I heard a noise from the sea. It's right there. He heard something rising out of the sea. He heard a roar of breakthroughs. I hear breakthroughs in the realm of the spirit. That's why the Bible says, watch and pray. Don't just pray. Watch and pray. If you don't watch, you'll be discouraged. Watch from the realm of the spirit, but keep on praying. Watch doesn't mean you are seeing something. It means you are expecting to see something. Oh, there's nothing. So I keep praying. And then I come and I watch again. I see nothing. I keep on praying. I go back to my place of prayer. Then I come back and I look again. Cloud the size of a man's hand. I'm not stopping. I'll keep on praying. Say pray again. Say don't stop praying. Say keep on praying. Go up. Tell the kings to prepare. Lest the rain stop him. Next verse. He says, now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds. While you are praying in your closet, something is happening outside. It happened while he was praying. While he was praying. Not that he had given up and he stopped. When you stop praying, things stop happening in the spirit. He kept praying. As he was praying, a cloud of the size of a man's hand became thick, dark, black clouds. And rain was imminent. But he kept on praying. Even though he saw many, many heavy clouds, he didn't stop. Many of you, you stop when the breakthrough is near. So the devil sends wind and he blows await the breakthrough. Have you ever seen sometimes it looks like it's going to rain but and you say I thought it was going to rain you stop praying don't stop praying even when it looks like you're going to be paid tomorrow don't celebrate too early keep on praying Lord I thank you that you have moved from the cloud the size of a man's hand I thank you that there are now heavy clouds but I will not stop praying because I'm seeing heavy clouds I will not stop praying because I had a nice phone call today I will not go to sleep I will keep on praying I will keep praying until the money is in the account I will keep praying until I'm holding the title I will keep praying until there's 20,000 members. I will keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Watch this. The Lord is saying, it is prayer that gathers the clouds. The cloud, the size of the man's hand, you can't do anything with it. The heavy clouds, you can't do anything with them. So don't stop praying. If you do not have in your hand what you can do something with, keep praying. You don't stop praying because you've got a heavy promise. You don't stop praying because you had a meeting with the president. That is just a heavy cloud. Elijah did not stop praying because he saw a heavy cloud. He said, tell the king to go, but I'm not yet going. I'm going to keep on praying. <laughs> and what happened? And there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Say a heavy rain. I hear the Lord saying, I'm releasing heavy duty breakthroughs. If they pray, I want us to pray to release heavy duty breakthroughs. Open your mouth, yet stop praying. Now pray, heavy duty breakthroughs. Pray, somebody, pray, 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 pray. Heavy duty breakthroughs. Open your mouth and pray. Hey, Hallelujah. 
the Lord said, what are these heavy duty breakthroughs? He says, now remember, you've got to put it in context. Remember Elijah had prayed and stopped rain for three and a half years. So there was a drought. Many have stopped praying because there's a drought. But the Lord is saying, watch this. He's saying, despite the drought, it's not going to rain a little bit because there was a drought. Heavy rain. Wangao snaka na mari for the past three and a half years. But the Lord is saying, heavy rain. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. You come from being a pedestrian to an E-class. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. Holy Ghost, touch him. Heavy rain. Pray for heavy rain. Open your mouth and pray. Heavy rain. 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 Come on, pray for major breakthroughs. I know it has been dry, but you're about to enter major breakthroughs. Heavy duty rain. Oh, Heavy rains, heavy rains. I hear heavy rains are coming. I hear heavy rains are coming. Ah, Hallelujah. Major breakthroughs are a product of constant prayer. Not waiting for long, constant prayer. Major breakthroughs are a product of constant prayer. Cornelius, it is your giving and your prayer that go up as a memorial. Giving without prayer will lead to frustration. Giving without prayer. After you have given, you still need to pray. Because the two go hand in hand. Say constant prayer. If you are always giving, you should always be praying. If you learn to combine those two, giving plus prayer, constantly, you will see amazing results. Look at all the testimonies we post. It is giving and prayer. It is giving and prayer, giving and prayer, giving and prayer. Don't stop praying, don't stop giving. Pray in the morning, pray in the evening. Give in the morning, give in the evening. It's in your Bible. Say consistency. Saints, what you've been lacking is consistency. Acts chapter number 12, verse 5. Watch this. Peter was therefore kept in prison. The enemy has kept you somewhere. But what happened? But constant prayer. Constant prayer is always the but. There are problems in your life, but constant prayer. Things are not working in your marriage, but constant prayer. Your business is not moving, but constant prayer. Constant prayer. Constant prayer. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Watch this. God did not even just release him from prison because he was an apostle. Sometimes God needs you to do work for him. But because you are not praying, he still allows you to stay locked. It's not his fault. You pray yourself out of a situation. You pray yourself out of a situation. Oh, Shabahaya. You pray yourself out of a situation. Wherever the enemy has kept you, you can pray yourself out of that place. Wherever you have stayed stagnant, you can pray your way out of that. You can pray your way out of that small car. You can pray your way out of that small house. You can pray your way out of that small job. You can pray your way out of that small business. You can pray yourself out of, out of. He was kept, but prayers were offered so that he could come out of. Next verse. When Herod was about to bring him out, in other words, they wanted to kill him. Prayer is what will rescue you from the spirit of death. When Herod was about to bring him out, that night, say that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with chains, with two chains, between two soldiers and two guards. Somebody says heavy satanic presence. Say heavy satanic security. You can pray your way out of heavy satanic security systems. Whatever and whoever is in covenant with the devil to keep you bound, two prisoners, two chains, two soldiers, two gates. 
whatever the enemy has done to reinforce, you can pray your way out of it. He says, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Next verse. Now behold, say behold. Say behold. Tell your neighbor you're about to see the result of constant prayer. Constant prayer always ushers you into a behold. 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 Results. Behold. Testimonies. Behold. Behold. Hallelujah. Shout behold. Now, what are the results of the constant prayer? An angel of the Lord stood by him. Constant prayer brings angelic activities. Constant prayer brings angels. Angel came to Daniel in response to prayer. He said, I'm here because of your prayer. Not because you gave up to encourage you. No, because of your prayer. So constant prayer brings angels. And the light shone in the prison. Constant prayer brings light in a dark situation. I see the light of God lighting up your life in the name of Jesus. Wherever there are works of darkness, get ready for the light of God. Say, Jehovah, because of constant prayer, release your light upon my life. One minute, open your mouth and pray. Constant prayer brings light. Constant prayer brings light. Hey, Kapazatola Mahaya. Hallelujah. He says, light shone on the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up. Constant prayer is how you will rise. That's how Jabez rose. He rose by constant prayer. Say constant prayer. Say I will not stop praying. I will keep on praying. So you rise by constant prayer. He, he rose. Why? Heaven spoke. The angel came from heaven. What is heaven saying? Arise quickly. Arise. If you constantly pray, you will rise quickly. Don't say if I was going to rise out of reason. No. Constant prayer. Keep applying supernatural pressure on the enemy and there will be a suddenly. He said, arise quickly. And his chains fell off him. While you are here in prayer, don't look for a one-on-one -on -one with the man of God. No. While you are here in prayer, while you are at home in midnight prayer, while you are praying in your car, chains fell off. The Bible does not say they were removed. You are looking for the man of God to remove the chains. When there's a better option, you can pray for yourself and the chains can fall off for themselves. <laughs> Shout constant prayer! Shout constant prayer! People are being charged by false prophets for one-on-ones. One-on-one for what? When I can learn to pray for myself. Do you know, this is why they don't like me. Hear all the drama. Is this. I teach people to pray for themselves. So it's going to put them out of business. False prophets are going to get out of business. One-on-one each of them fashion. Because people will say there's something called prayer shift where I can plug into that prayer platform online and I can go there live when I'm in Harare and I, I contract the prayer virus. And when the virus comes up, I step into constant prayer and I begin to shift my things. That's why it's called prayer shift. You shift your way into real money. You shift your way into destiny. You shift your way into results. You shift your way by constant prayer and prayer shift. Hallelujah. Shout constant prayer and prayer shift. Shifts things into results. Shifts my destiny. Why, why, why is it called prayer shift? Why shift? Because you are not supposed to be where you are. So it is by prayer that we shift things. Shout constant prayer! Shout constant prayer! Hallelujah! You don't, know, you don't like how you look? You can shift it. Luke 9 29, Jesus' countenance changed as he prayed. You can beautify yourself through prayer. It's in your Bible. Say it is out. Talk to me. Say it is out. X12. <laughs> I'm going to show you something in your Bible. <laughs> Chains fell off his feet and his hands. 
Jump to verse 11. This will bless you. Now, when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that God has sent his angels and has delivered me, watch this, from the hand of Herod. I've preached about that before. I will leave that. This is more important. And from the expectation of the people. Prayer will remove you from the expectation of witches. <laughs> they are expecting you to close your church. But constant prayer will get you delivered from whatever the enemy was expecting. Say Jehovah God, I know the enemy had expectations of divorce, expectations of calamity, expectations of poverty upon my life. But by constant prayer, Jehovah God, deliver me from the expectation of the enemy. Open your mouth and pray. This is powerful. Azadomahaya. La kaza tabaya ekata emalada baya erakaba imbeleka de be delivered from satanic expectations emeleka ta be delivered from satanic plans emalaka ta sabala they were expecting you to go down they didn't know about prayer shift you have connected to prayer shift you are not going down lord deliver me from the expectation of the enemy Say by constant prayer, by prayer shift, the Lord will disappoint my enemies. Say, Lord, disappoint my enemies from their expectation of my life. As I'm praying, I activate the disappointment of my enemies. What they expected will not come to pass. Open your mouth and pray. They thought you'd go down. They thought you'd be destroyed. They'll be surprised. They'll be surprised. The enemy thought you would die. Hallelujah. David said, My enemies rejoice not over me. For when I fall, I will rise again. Yes, I fell, but I'm coming back through prayer shift. Somebody say, I'm coming back. Say, my enemies, don't waste your time rejoicing over me. I'm connected to prayer shift. I'm coming back. Forget your expectations. Don't even rejoice. You are celebrating too early. Listen, Lucifer is celebrating too early because by prayer shift, constant prayer, God is Changing your story. Open your mouth and pray. That's Micah 7, verse 8. Rejoice not over me. I'm rising through prayer. I'm rising again through prayer. Don't bother rejoicing enemies. Don't bother rejoicing. Don't bother rejoicing. You are rising again. You are rising again. You are rising again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter number 12, after Paul and his team, they were stranded on the island of Malta after they had been shipwrecked. The Bible says that they gathered sticks. Hallelujah. It was cold. Say it was cold. Say it was cold. But what they did is they lit up a fire. They gathered sticks and lit up a fire. Like what we are doing here. Hallelujah. We are lighting up a fire. Hallelujah. Someone say light up a fire. And the Bible says after they lit up a fire, a serpent came out of that fire because he was now burning. Now, this is demonic retaliation now. After you raise a fire, there'll be demonic retaliation. And the Bible says that the serpent beat Paul. In fact, it says it fastened itself unto his hand. 
there are things that the enemy has fastened unto you. Dangerous things, hallelujah. Lethal things that he has fastened unto you. That's why there's fibroids. He has fastened it unto you. That's why there's, there's, there's objects moving in your body. That's why your heart is called heart palpitations. The enemy has fastened some things unto you. But the Bible says, Paul shook it off into the same fire that he lit. Whatever comes as retaliation, you will shake it off in prayer. Why mean it? Shake it off. Shake it off and pray. 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 Shake off depression. Shake off what the enemy is putting on you. Shake it off, somebody. Open your mouth and shake it off. Hallelujah. He shook it off into the fire. While you're here, prayer shift, you're shaking things off. You are leaving them here. And because there's fire here, they will burn. They will burn. The Bible says fire goes before our God. Delays are burning. Frustrations are burning. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of failure is burning in this place. So he shook it off. He shook it off. Watch this. And he suffered no harm. And then the Bible says that they looked for a little while and they thought that he would die. And the Bible says that when they saw that nothing happened to him, this is my point, they expected him to die, but their expectations were not met. The Bible says they changed their minds. Wizards will change their minds. Your haters will change their minds. But you need to pray constantly. Light up the fire now. Open your mouth. The Enemies will change their minds. Hey, Kazatabahaya, open your mouth. The enemy must change his mind. He will 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 change his mind. Come on, open your mouth. Emela duata, ibarada baya, emela kata, erada baya, ela tua baya, emenda kalabaya, iraka taya, emela daba, emenda baya, ira. Yes. I shall get behind Rambio. The Lord is saying, you had an appointment with death, but the enemy will be disappointed. That appointment with death will turn into a disappointment for the enemy. They had even started planning your funeral. Oh, Zatabahaya, the eaters of flesh, they were planning your death, but the plans are going to be aborted. Say, I abort every satanic plan in the name of Jesus. I abort it. The expectation of the enemy is being aborted. Hosea 9.14 Watch this. He says, give them, oh Lord. He's talking to God. What will you give them? A miscarrying womb. A miscarrying womb. Whatever was conceived in satanic wombs and in satanic incubators that was waiting to be birthed. They wanted to birth poverty. They wanted to birth sickness. They wanted to birth hard, hardship out of your life. So they were now conjuring some things. They were now conceiving some things in the realm of the spirit. But the Bible says, give them, oh Lord, what will you give them? A miscarrying womb and a dry breast. So in the name of Jesus, whatever was about to be birthed from satanic quarters, we give the enemy a miscarrying womb. Open your mouth and pray somebody. Ah, open your mouth. They thought you would die, but to say, we cancel the assignment of death. They'll be surprised. Irada bayada, kemele gada gade. Iradia, embarata, embarada, embesaba, engeta baya, eladuata, embarada baya, rekata, embelede, iradua. Shout, Lord, terminate satanic plans as I am praying now. Jehovah God. Terminate satanic plans 
of calamity. Open your mouth and pray. He's being terminated. He's being terminated. He's being terminated. You need to pray. We terminate. We terminate. We terminate. We terminate. We terminate. Satanic plans. Online. Terminate. Terminate. Sometimes I get strange messages on my phone. Men of God will be married to my husband for 25 years. He just woke up and said, I don't want any more. In fact, he said he's surprised I'm still here. It, it was, listen, it didn't happen that day. Hello? It didn't start that day. It was being incubated in satanic incubators. And you did not command a miscarriage of satanic plans. So today with that understanding, you realize that problems don't just happen when they happen. The enemy starts cooking problems. There are things the enemy is cooking. Which need to be terminated before they are born. There are accidents that are being cooked. And they need to be terminated before you have an accident, Tony. We terminate it. Say, Lord, whatever the enemy is cooking up in satanic rooms and satanic incubators, I release a power in the blood of Jesus to terminate. Open your mouth and terminate it. Terminate it. Terminate. 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 Come on, operate like that. Terminate. We terminate business failure. We terminate business failure. We terminate business failure. We terminate that spirit. We terminate. We terminate that spirit. Ah, we terminate it. We terminate it. You better open your mouth. You need to understand that the enemy uses words in the spirit. He says, No weapon, Isaiah 54 17, formed or fashioned against me shall be able to prosper. Listen to the weapon. And every tongue that rises against me, I shall condemn. So there are things the enemy is saying about you. Don't keep quiet. You need to learn to terminate those words. There are people who speak against you. They are bewitching you. You need to learn to speak and to counsel those words. And no weapon formed or fashion against me shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, watch this, in judgment, I shall what? Condemn. So in other words, the enemy has looked at your life and assessed it and passed a judgment that I will eat one it's a judgment. What do you need to do? You need to now go in the same realm of the spirit. Because when they speak, they're spoken to the realm of the spirit. You need to go to the realm of the spirit. And now say, I command an objection to that judgment. Lord, by the vetoing powers that are in the blood of Jesus, I veto that judgment. Jehovah God, I might deserve to die, but Lord, where there is judgment, remember mercy. So I veto those words in the realm of the spirit and I bring them down. The Bible says it's my job to condemn those words. So what they've spoken, I condemn those words. And then he says, this is the heritage of God's children. So whatever the enemy has spoken and released as a judgment, you can condemn it. Say, I condemn every negative word spoken by the enemy over my life. Words of failure, words of disaster, words of destruction. I bring them down. Open your mouth and bring down the word. Bring them down. Bring them down. Bring them down. 
Have you ever watched some of those court dramas? You learn a lot from that. Sometimes the prosecutor says something. Hello? And he, or maybe he says objection. When your lawyer is saying something, he says objection. Hello? I'm teaching you spiritual warfare. Now, sometimes the judge looks at that objection of the, of the public prosecutor and he says overruled. Say overruled. You need to ask God to overrule the satanic objection to your prosperity. There are enemies objecting and saying you must not rise because of what your forefathers did. But Jehovah God can overrule. Say, Lord, overrule what the enemy has said over my life. Say, I command a supernatural overruling of the enemy's words. Begin to activate overruling. I'm teaching you a new way. Overrule. We overrule divorce. We overrule failure. We overrule delays. We overrule. We overrule We overrule sicknesses. Overrule. Embalata. Iradoya. Kembalagada. Rikataya. Embeleta. Embandeya. Ikabaya. Rakata. Eledaba. Embandeya. Imandebe. Rakataya. Indelede. Yandolodo. Ibarata. Ekebeya. Andelekata. Embandebaya. Iladabayata. Rekataya. Indelede. Yandobaya. There are things that the enemy says about you. Psalm 3, give me Psalm 3 quickly. And the Lord, why have so many increased who trouble me? There are many who rise up against me. How do you know they are rising up against him? Next verse. Many are they who say of me. What is the enemy saying of you? So that's how they rise against you by saying pay attention to what they are saying not so, so that it enters your heart no but so that you overrule it watch this they are saying there is no help for you in God Do you know you can be coming to church and you don't benefit because someone said they put those words in the realm of the spirit and you did not veto those words say lord i cancel those words of non-achievement from my spiritual walk and they say there's no help for you in god Selah. think about it next verse but but whatever the enemy has said you need to say but but I won't go to but we not to but they know Wakanda scripture they said you will not rise in God but I'm now saying Psalm 113 verse number 7 God he lifts men from the gutter most and he puts them on the upper so you don't just say an emotional but you bring forth your strong reasons are you learning are you learning go back to Psalm 3 but you oh lord are a shield for me david was actually saying but psalm 91 god is my shield and my so in that scripture he was quoting another scripture but you oh lord are my shield in other words lord shield me from the words of the enemy. Say, Lord, the enemy has said many things against my destiny, but you, Lord, are my shield. 
Open your mouth and begin to activate the shield. You are my shield, oh Lord. Shield me from the words of the enemy. Shield me, Jehovah. Shield me, Jehovah. Shield me, Jehovah. Shield Tony, Jehovah. Shield me, Lord. Shield me, Lord. Listen, don't deceive yourself and tell yourself that because you are nice to people, people will be nice to you. Breaking news. Sometimes they are nasty because you are nice. Oh, unoto ane mare kupan. Unoko pamo na twenty dollars. Acho ane mare kupan. Anaka na chumbom kumbira. Acho ane mare sake. And they take that money and put it on satanic altars and begin to complicate your life financially. So a good thing that you have done, they turn it for evil. David said in Psalm 109, they have taken my good and turned it evil. In today's lingo. Are you here? Are you here? Say, Lord, what the enemy is turning evil that I did good for them by the power in the blood of Jesus I veto whatever they are doing he says but you oh Lord are my shield God will not shield you until you activate his shield If you are sick, you don't need Jehovah Jireh. You need Jehovah Rafika. So by prayer, you activate the dimension of God that you need at that particular time. Don't just say, Lord, step in. No, which Lord? That's why you need to study the names of Jehovah. You need to understand dimensions of God. God is multidimensional. Are you listening to me? You don't need a pistol. You need another tire. So, there are many aspects to God. Like there are many aspects to a car. There's tires, there's doors, there's windows, there's glasses, there's windscreen, there's rubbers, there's exhaust, there's engine, there's gearbox. Hello? Can a gearbox, Rafa, you don't need a new engine. You need a gearbox. You need the God of gearbox. You're not hearing me. Whatever dimension of God that you need, you need to learn him and activate him. If you are broke, you don't need Jehovah Rapha, the healer. No. I need Jehovah Jireh combined with Jehovah El Shaddai. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. So, Lord, provide more than enough. Yes. So, David activated the shield of God. When you're under attack, you don't need Jehovah Jireh. You need Jehovah Saboath, the mighty man of war. Because that's the God who comes to fight for you. You, Lord, are my shield. So, God has to shield you first. Then he moved to the next dimension. My glory. And the lifter of my head. When glory comes, lifting comes. Isaiah 60, verse number 1. Arise, shine, lifting. For your light has come, glory. You Listen to me. You need to turn scriptures into prayer points. You've been reading your Bible for 27 years, no results. Because you were reading like you're reading a newspaper. Okay, no my results, I am a election. That's how you've been reading your Bible. No. You need to take the scriptures and appropriate them. Bring me that box of sanitizer. The, the, that one, yeah, thank you. Thank you. In fact, you know what? Is there sanitizer, sanitizer? Is it there? Bring it, thank you. This one will be a better example. Thank you. This is a box of sanitizer. This is a bottle of sanitizer. Hello? This one. In here is sanitizer which is able to kill germs. This one. 80% alcohol. So this one is no, no games. Eh? Powerful. So here 
you know now, you now read about what it can do the instructions and all of that amen watch this let's assume i've got covid in my hands hello but all i'm doing is reading wow this is powerful oh okay so this thing can actually kill the covid oh wow okay wow praise god god is powerful whoa this is serious Has the COVID left my hands? Where is the COVID? It's in my hands. You know why? Because I've read about the solution, but I've not applied it. You have read scriptures, but you have not spread them. Don't read no weapon formed or fashioned against me. No. You need to take it from your Bible and say, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. You've got the scriptures. You're a Christian. You've got the scriptures. You've got too many dangerous scriptures I've taught you. But you have not said, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Suffer a witch not to live. Why are you not spraying? Do you know what people do? They say, I don't even understand why I'm suffering. Because did God not promise in his Bible that I shall be the head and not the tail? Promises of God do not activate themselves. They are activated by you. If you don't spray, you die with COVID. How many believe there's power in the blood of Jesus? But that power is only seen if you now take the blood of Jesus and you say, I invoke the blood of Jesus. Watch this. Over my life and over my spouse and over my children, I invoke it upon them. In the name of Jesus, I invoke it. What does in the name of Jesus mean? In the authority of Jesus. Not in my name. Because in my name, my name is Bingrish. My name, there are cases. My name, there are problems. That's another subject for another day. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In other words, when God listens to that prayer, after you sign off in the name of Jesus, he's no longer seeing you. He's seeing Christ and what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. So whenever you pray, don't forget to sign in the name of Jesus. Is this not better than me calling you and saying, uh, you stay at number 77, Fifth Avenue in Maybrine. I say, yes, Papa! No, I instead I will say to you, there is a serpent spirit at whatever your house is. You are not interested in the address. Keep it for yourself. What you must do is go to your house and begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Because I'm seeing satanic powers in that home. So we need to plead the blood of Jesus. This is the scripture. You see? And this is what the scripture can do. But more than knowing the scripture and knowing what it can do, I want you to go and spray. That's KPM. That's the difference between KPM and other ministries. Hello? We teach you how to do it for yourself. Never, listen, never forget, no one can beat you praying for, for you. You know your weaknesses. You, you know your weaknesses. Don't ask me to prophesy your weakness when you know it. Who knows that must honor who struggle and waste? I don't have to prophesy it. You know. So you lay your own hands by waste and say, Jehovah God, this weakness that is unto death, I subdue it. I bring my body under subjection. And I declare and I decree to my feeling you to God to perish, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. Last, whatever it is, Zem, whatever it is, I shut it down by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Why should the man of God prophesy? I could do Zem. It's nonsense. I mean, this is what's happening in churches. People are celebrating nonsense. Learn to pray for yourself. Learn to fight for yourself. Learn to sow seed for yourself. And in this church, there's something I want to stop. I don't want this system. You're good to, you only sow seed when I tell you to sow. Do you not know that you should be sowing a seed? We, I've stirred the water. We want equipment for Johannesburg. What are you waiting for? Jump in. 
Did you not hear the testimony? Yeah, see the testimony, Anezu. Those people, the whole house is being renovated by strangers. Hello? Hello? But you know, they committed a seat on the altar. They don't do dega. They don't do dega. In the kingdom, you've got to give if you want to receive. You've got to apply the scriptures if you want to destroy the enemies. You need to get to a place in the realm of the spirit where you tell which is in your family. You are only alive because I deem it so. You know, people believe it when witches say it. But when men of God say it, they say, hey, 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 did you? I didn't post that testimony. There's someone who said to me, I'll post it. They said, men of God, I logged in once to your program. Not even live, delayed. And you were speaking in passing about witches dying. And I caught it. And two days later, a witch in our family died. I'll post it, I'll post it. Yes, yes. That's the God of KPM. We destroy witches. We don't tolerate or discuss. Listen, there are people in the Bible that Jesus did not try to evangelize. Stop trying to evangelize witches. He said, you brood of vipers. They were not even human beings. There are people in your family, they are not human beings. They are a brood of vipers. Allah satabahaya. I said the brood of vipers in the Ferreira family. The brood of vipers. We destroy them. You have weapons, child of God. Learn to use them. Say it's a battle. Talk to me. Say it's a battle. Notice David never tried to evangelize Goliath. He didn't say, no, Goliath, no, come, let's discuss. You know, there's God in heaven. You can actually be born again. Do you want to receive Jesus? No. He said, I'm going to cut off your head. You have not done deliverance. Sometimes in deliverance, when a demon manifests, it says, it says, we can't stop this. That's why they tell you over my dead body. Because if it stops witchcraft, you'll die. So there are witches that you need to help to die. Since it's the covenant, say, Lord, by your sword of the spirit, the word of God, I cut off witchcraft early in my life. Psalm 101, verse number 8. Early, O oh Lord, cut off witchcraft. Open your mouth and cut off witchcraft. In the family, 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 Pray and don't stop praying. Psalm 68 verse 1. Why should I pray? When I pray, I let. What is to let? To allow. I allow God to arise. In other words, if I don't pray, I'm not allowing God to come onto the scene. Let means allow. God to arise. God knows all things. There are people who say, man of God, I'm frustrated because I don't understand. Since God knows everything, he knows I'm suffering, but he's not doing anything about it. Point of correction. He knows it, but you have not let him. Let, let God arise. Allow God to arise in prayer and let his enemies be scattered. So God knows you have enemies. But it's your job to allow him see that? So when I pray, I'm letting God. Say, Lord, today I allow you to arise and destroy all wicked forces 
in my family. Open your mouth and allow him. Allow God to arise and scatter the enemy. which Open your mouth and pray. Say constant prayer. Say I'll never stop praying. I'm closing. Say I'll never stop praying. Finally, why should you stop praying? Why should you not stop praying? Why should you continue to pray? <laughs> because you've got satanic plans to cancel. Why? Because you need to undo what Satan has done. You need to disappoint his hope. You need to abort the satanic plans. You need to terminate the terminator. You need to activate the supernatural. You need to gain advantage over the enemy. You need to override the enemy. You need to overrule the enemy. You need to bring God onto the scene. That's why you don't stop praying. You need to veto satanic powers. You need to activate the impossible don't stop praying you need to actualize your prophecy don't stop praying you need to activate your greatness don't stop praying you need to fulfill your destiny don't stop praying you need to activate power don't stop praying because prayer is how you secure the hand of God don't stop praying you turn tests into testimonies don't stop praying you turn results into supernatural results when you pray you wrestle with the enemy when you pray you attack the devil don't stop praying that's how you enlarge your territory Jabez. don't stop praying that's how you get your freedom Peter Paul and Silas in prison don't stop praying that's how you break yokes off you Esau don't stop praying true spiritual power is based in prayer don't stop praying why that's how you object and overrule satanic decisions that's how you activate supernatural dominion don't stop praying that's how you invoke the blood of Jesus. Don't stop praying. That's how angels come onto the scene. Never stop praying. That's how you turn prophecies into testimonies. Don't stop praying. That's how you establish destinies. Don't stop praying. That's how you have sweatless victory. Don't stop praying. That's how you interrupt satanic plans. That's how you abort the hope of the enemy. You override the enemy when you pray. Hey, you destroy destroy satanic projections you destroy satanic in incantations when you pray you destroy witchcraft and sorcery when you pray you resist the devil when you pray you appropriate the word you enforce the word when you pray God comes to town that's how you activate progress when you pray like Elijah you will get the overtakers anointing don't stop praying that's why we have prayer shifts.